Good morning. Uh, I'm City Councilor John Powers. For those who uh, might not recognize me or know me, I'm the Ward Councilor in Ward 5, and uh, I'm here with uh, Mayor Brian Arrigo and uh, Chief Christopher Bright uh, to discuss uh, what is happening here at the Alden Mills Fire Station in the Point of Pines. Uh, this is something that uh, I have been pursuing now for close to two decades. Uh, it's so important down here and it's become even more important with the uh, wood construction that is allowed by, not by the city of Revere but by state law on the boulevard. Also the overtopping uh, last April, uh, a year ago April we had two major arteries closed down and that would be the Revere Beach Boulevard and the uh, Route 1A North Shore Road due to overtopping. So the Point of Pines at that time and, and some of the boulevard was actually an island and uh, it was just impossible to uh, get apparatus down here or emergency vehicles. I'm going to uh, turn this over now to uh, the mayor and uh, let him, and he's been so helpful uh, getting this done. Uh, I came to him uh, two or three times he, uh, and every time he's been so receptive and he said we'll get it done and uh, we are getting it done now and within approximately two years you'll have a brand new Alden Mills fire station capable of putting a ladder truck in here, a pump and also a water rescue unit which we so sorely need in this area. So I'm going to turn this over now to the mayor and let him uh, tell you some more about it. Th thanks John. Uh, you know as Council Powers has mentioned, uh, this has been a priority of my administration and one that we started working on really on, on day one. Uh, you know, there were a couple of facilities that the city owned, one the DPW facility uh, and two the Pines Fire Station that really fell into disrepair, hadn't been maintained properly and and uh, were, were areas that we wanted to, we knew that we wanted to invest. And uh, with the leadership of Chief Bright, uh, Council Powers, uh, we we're able to, to do things the right way. It takes a little bit longer sometimes, and, uh, but at the end of the day, we're gonna have a great product for the residents, not only of the Point of Pines, but the entire beach, the entire eastern part of the city. Uh, as John has mentioned, we, we have seen uh, you know, an increase in, in the development, especially along, uh, along the beach, and we wanna make sure that residents know that we're providing the top level of services that we can provide. Uh, and being able to push this ball forward is really a, a huge accomplishment for, for not only uh, the administration, but for the, for the entire city. And that really comes down to John's leadership. Uh, as, as John said, he's, uh, he's been advocating for this for uh, close to 20 years. And I'm just proud to be in a position to be able to push the ball a little bit further. And uh, we were... Uh, with the help of, and, and, and support of the city council unanimously. Uh, you know, that, that's an important word there, unanimous, because um, I don't know if, uh, if they would unanimously uh, vote to give me a birthday card but uh, on my birthday. But uh, the fact that that was something that, um, that the council supported uh, and uh, we, could, we could move forward was really, really important. And uh, I think it shows the... the, the um, the fact that we are moving forward and with your leadership, John, we've been able to get this going and in two years we're going to see a beautiful new fire station. It's going to include uh, community space, which is was sure, really important. Yeah. That was one thing that uh, John had advocated for when we were talking about the plans of of what the what the station would look like, we wanted to have wanted to make sure that there was community space. The other part that's really important, and the chief is I'm sure going to talk about this, is having um, the right level and size of of uh, of personnel and equipment here. Uh, John mentioned the fact that there have been a number of instances where roads have been. Uh, undertaken we've had storm surges that uh, we haven't seen in 30 or 40 years uh, to have uh, to have a boat uh, presence here will be will be tremendous and and it'll be a big piece of what we provide uh, uh, to the again to the residents of the Point of Pines and the residents of the Riverside and the residents of the eastern part of the city so thank you John for your leadership and uh, we look forward to to the demo of this building and of course the uh, the groundbreaking and the ribbon cutting. I'm going to I'm going to thank you Mr. Mayor and uh, I can't emphasize enough 
uh, the support that the administration has given me on making this a reality. It's, it's long overdue. It, it's something that is going to happen and uh, should happen. And uh, the people down here and along the boulevard, Kelly's Meadows, uh, back of Wonderland, uh, Oak Island, uh, they're going to have uh, extra support down here that they normally would not have, particularly when Engine 5 is out on a run in Beachmont or, or uh, up off of Broadway or some Shirley Avenue. Uh, engine 5 is the second busiest engine in, in the city, and uh, this it makes it more important that we get this station built and opened as quickly as possible. I'm going to turn this over now to Chief Bright, and he can tell you a little more about firefighting certainly than I can. Thank you. Uh, again, um, just to, I would like to thank uh, Mayor Rigo and Councilor Powers who really have been supportive of not only this project but about every concern of the fire department from day one. Um, it, it really has made my job as chief much more rewarding. Uh, I'm very fortunate to be around to see see this project actually come to fruition. And as the mayor mentioned, with the uh, unanimous support of the city council, which it, it's not easy to get unanimous support for anything, really. Um, so we're, the, the fire department's very grateful for that. And, I, and we really feel the support of, of the entire community on this project. Um, again, this project's not just going to benefit fire department responses for the Point of Pines, the Riverside, Revere Beach area, Oak Island, it's going to really improve uh, our responses over, over for, for the entire city. You know, it's going to have a ripple effect for everybody. So as important as, as this project is, uh, and, and getting the, the uh, Alden Mills Fire Station rebuilt, uh, the next step, and we're always thinking about the next thing that we need to do, uh, and one area that I know uh, uh, we, we need to take a look at is uh, the Freeman Street fire station and uh, take a look at that building that is another building that's uh, up there in age and one that um, you know serves uh, a, a, a section of the city Revere Street uh, and um, that uh, middle section of the city that that we need to be able to be thinking forward about and one thing I know, uh, Council Powers, you've mentioned this, and Chief Bright, you've mentioned this too. Um, as we think about the Wonderland redevelopment, and we've been very clear that we want there to be commercial development down the, down there. Uh, but one of the one of the opportunities or potential opportunities is um, to maybe have uh, some uh, fire service coming out of uh, out of that site and replacing the Freeman Street uh, site. And so that is something that we're we're going to be actively looking at and. Again, we don't just try to look at you know getting things done in the in the next you know couple of years. It's really a longer term master planning process that we do in terms of our, our buildings, and we're we're thinking you know 10, 15, 20 years ahead, and the services that we're going to need to provide, uh, and especially with the redevelopment of the Wonderland site uh, on the horizon. Uh, that is an opportunity, and, and I thought maybe we could we could discuss that a little bit, uh, Council Powers. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, I strongly urge, uh, you know, and I, they, as they say, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, and we've taken that single step here. But I, I can't emphasize enough the importance of uh, getting a fire station down at uh, Wonderland. Uh, closing uh, Freeman Street. Uh, it's not accessible even for the fire apparatus to get in and out of there when that uh, 1A is backed up with traffic. So I think that's that's a step in the right direction. And I think people have to understand that uh, since the last sentence, sentence, uh, census, which was 10 years ago, uh, we've probably had at least another 5,000 people moving into the city. Uh, people that may not have been counted in the census. Uh, we have more medical calls for the fire department. Uh, you, you know, more accidents, there's more automobiles on the road. And, and that's not uh, the fault of uh, anyone in city government. That's, that's just the way things are. People are moving in. It's, people talk a lot about uh, uh, building. And uh, when you talk about building, you have to remember one thing, that the zoning was in place. Uh, people own a piece of property, they have a right to come in and, 
and, and build on it. And that's not my fault or Mayor Rigo's fault or any other member of the city council. It's just the property's there, it's zoned that way, and they have a right to come in and, and, and build on it. So that's all the more reason why we need to keep our fire department and our police department uh, right on target, moving ahead with the growth of the city and moving ahead to make sure that Every citizen in, every, in this city ha has a right to uh, adequate public safety, and that's something that I know the mayor is concerned about, and I'm concerned about, and we're going to move forward in that direction. I'd like to, I know Chief Bright probably has a few more things he'd like to say uh, to add on to that, and uh, I'll turn it over to him now. Thank you. Yeah, in regards to the Freeman Street Fire Station, I mean, it's, uh, that station has served us very well. Um, it was built in 1918. It's over 100 years old now. Um, when they started operating out of that station, they, they were using horses. So, I mean, that, you know, the, the traffic situation out at that fire station, it makes it really, really difficult to, um, to, to respond in and out of that fire station. It's not, it's not, it's a, not a great location anymore. Um, and, and again, the modern fire apparatus and everything, we, we've outgrown that station, and that's why we're looking to you know, relocate it down into that Wonderland project someday um, when that day comes. I think that's part and parcel where the fire department needs to grow out to better respond to our call volumes, which also, we're up over 12, about 12,000 calls a year, emergency calls, whereas, you know, it's probably, you know, it's probably doubled in the past 10, 15 years, our, our call volume. So um, just trying to keep pace with all that and keep our response times, um, you know, where they should be. Um, with all the other competing interests on the roadways out here, it is, it is a difficult city to, to get around in traffic-wise. So um, that's, that's where we really need to go um, down the road, uh, you know, for the fire department for our, for our next big project. The other important part of this uh, facility is going to be the community room. And you say, well, why, why is a community room important? Well, let's say you had somebody flooded out of their house. Let's say they had a fire and we had to relocate people overnight. Uh, community room is there. Uh, training uh, fire uh, uh, f officials in there, firefighters. It's so important to have that community room there. And, and lastly, uh, people uh, that want to vote. Right now they're going over to the... Uh, Station, the uh, Yacht Club over in uh, Rice Avenue, which is, uh, in my understanding, uh, not really adequate uh, to have people go in and vote. It becomes very overcrowded. We're going to have this beautiful community room here, and there's all types of, you know, functions and uh, things that can happen in there uh, for the benefit of the community. And again, uh, it's it's. Not, not only for the Point of Pines, but it's for the boulevard. And uh, the, the thing we have to remember here is that uh, this, this station here, once it's up and running, uh, will, will, prov will provide uh, apparatus for the entire east side of the city. I'll give you an example. Uh, when there's a fire in Beachmont, or up off of Park Avenue, or Shirley Avenue, and uh, let's say uh, the, the ladder company on the parkway and the engine one, ladder one, uh, engine four is coming off of Broadway, engine five is pressed into service also. And so you've got nothing covering this end of the city except maybe a ladder on Broadway and, and a pump up in North Revere. And that's why this is so important and I can't emphasize that strongly enough. Before I uh, stop, I'd like to thank once again Mira Rigo uh, for listening and uh, moving ahead. And I'd like to thank my colleagues on the city council. There aren't too many times up there when we get an 11 to nothing vote, but uh, we did it this time here, and I can't emphasize enough my gratitude again to the mayor and the city council. Thank you, John. And one last thing I'd like to mention is that. Uh, in future voting, which will be coming up very soon, uh, people that would normally vote at the fire station here in the Point of Pines are going to be voting at the Point of Pines Yard Club. And uh, secondly, uh, and I don't think uh, too many people are aware of that right now, but uh, people that normally vote at the Freeman Street Fire Station are going to be voting at the uh, Turkish Cultural Center, which is right across from 505 Revere Street uh, on the corner of Ford Street. So. Uh, 
that that's uh, just a reminder to everyone to get out there and vote, make your vote count, and this is how good government works. Thank you.